Hi, Neil and Zeppi for Zepp Factory Outlet. Do you have a stinky, smelly, nasty shower? Get rid of it with Green Link Shower Cleaner. First off, what's your favorite part about living in Prince Albert? You know, Prince Albert is the gateway to the north. It has all the amenities of a city, yet it's so close to the lakes and, uh, and the wildlife of the north. Um, you know, another, another feature of Prince Albert is the actual the people of Prince Albert. I've got lots of friends here. Um, it, it's just a great place to, uh, to call home. So, uh, you know, I grew up just west of Prince Albert in Canada. We used to come into PA all the time to movies and, and different events. So it is the hub for the region, and uh, that, I think that's what makes it such a great city. Do you have a funny campaign story? You know, even yesterday I was up at uh, Arbor Field and uh, they were revealing a sign for an old school in an area where the school no longer sits. They just wanted to put it up to, to commemorate the teachers and the people that used to go to that school. And uh, when the guy's introducing me, he gives the speech and talks a little bit about me. And then he says, oh, by the way, this is not a political event, but everybody here should vote for Randy Hoback. <laughs> and just little plugs like that I find just kind of hilarious <laughs> kind of fun. Do you ever find it weird seeing your face on a sign? Yes. I hate myself in pictures. I just <laughs> absolutely hate it. So, um, But in the same breath, it's really effective. Uh, I have the picture on my truck, and I have a lot of people now when I pull into a a grocery store or an auction sale or anything like that where they come up to you and say, ah, I wanted to talk to you. Or if your picture wasn't on the truck, they wouldn't necessarily know who you were. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's been very effective. What's one thing that you think people should know about you? Yeah, what you see is what you get. Uh, you know, I'm the type of guy that uh, uh, I'll talk to anybody. I like to visit with anybody. Uh, if you came up to me on the street and you, you needed some help or or uh, I just wanted to visit, I'm the guy that likes to do that. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what's the most important topic this election campaign? You know what, I think it's coming to leadership. It's, it's who do we want to lead this country into this turbulent time that seems to be coming ahead of us. Whether you look at the issues with ISIS or the Ukraine, uh, when you look at the economy, when you look at the global economy, when you see what happened yesterday in the stock market, you know, who has the experience, who has the judgment, who has the thought process? Uh, who has the team to best lead us through, and that's where Stephen Harper just leads the competition by miles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we look at the Canadian economy, look at here in Saskatchewan, and what we've gone through since 2008, you know, while our American friends were losing their houses and high unemployment rate, um, we were nowhere near that situation. In fact, we're looking for welders, we're looking for plumbers and electricians. We had created an environment for our economy to grow and prosper, and our kids to move back to Saskatchewan. And I think we want to see that continue. When did you first get into politics and why? Uh, it goes back to my wheat grower days when uh, I was a chair of the West Canada Wheat Growers. Uh, we're working on the Canadian Wheat Board issue and we started to quickly realize that if we wanted to fix that issue, it wasn't fixing it here in Western Canada, it was actually fixing it in Ottawa. And I got involved with uh, international trade with the wheat growers. When we decided no longer to farm, David Anderson asked me to come to Ottawa. I, and work with him on the Wheatport issue and my kids had grown up at that point in time. Uh, my son had gone to Australia, my daughter was going to school in Saskatoon. So my wife and I said, yeah, let's try that. So that's what we did. So, uh, I was flying back to Ottawa. I ended up sitting next to the former MP Brian Fitzpatrick and I didn't really know him that well. He talked the whole way. It was, it was an interesting flight from Saskatoon to Toronto. He talked the whole way and then from the Toronto to Ottawa he just kept talking and talking. Anyways, we deboard the plane in Ottawa and, and we're just getting ready to grab our bags and stuff. And he turns to me and says, Randy, you should be, you should run. You'd be a great MP. And I said, Brian, when you retire in seven years, I'll think about it. And just kind of left it at that. Well, a week later, uh, Debbie Jordan in, in Doug Finley's office phones me and says, uh, Brian just informed us he's retiring and he strongly suggests that we talk to you about it. So I never really considered it until that point in time. So I had a good talk with my wife, Jerry, and, and uh, I thought, yeah, this is something I'd like to do. It's something that I think would be very rewarding. And and uh, at the same time, something where I can serve back into the community. So that's mm -hmm. where I decided to run. Up, up until now, what would you say has been your biggest success? Well, the wheat board, the changes in the wheat board to see the, um, uh, the farmers have the right and the ability to sell their grain as they see fit, that definitely is a huge success, getting that through. Uh, being aggressive with the, grain, with the rail companies and grain companies on the lack of delivery and the lack of performance last year and the year before, there's still more work that needs to be done on both those, whether it's the contracts for farmers or how the grain is being shipped and uh, how the rail companies are treating uh, our shippers and how they're taking them for granted instead of providing the service that they deserve. Um, 
looking back, what's something you know now that you wish you knew when you were younger? I don't know. I, I have no regrets, and that's kind of one of the things, you know, when I was younger, I remember talking to some seniors, and they say, live a life with no regrets. So take some risks once in a while, make your decisions, and, and, and live with those decisions. So.